All right, everybody. Good evening and welcome to special meeting number 326 of the Wachusett Regional School District School Committee held tonight on Tuesday, September 29th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. This meeting is being conducted remotely using Google Meets um, for the purpose of um, abiding by Governor Baker's orders on indoor um, gatherings. Um, tonight, we are here to discuss a single motion. I do ask members to keep their cameras on for the entirety of the meeting tonight, unless there is some sort of technical glitch or difficulty. Um, as is our policies and within our bylaws, each member will be given two minutes to speak on the motion this evening. I will be using a timer uh, to help facilitate those two minutes. Um, if you have any questions during the meeting, please feel free to ask, but I ask you to ask those questions aloud and not in the chat. Um, I would ask you to use the chat for hand raised only. For members tonight as well, we do have two further meetings um, after the close of the meeting this evening. Um, there are two separate links. I do ask at the close of this meeting this evening that you go to the regular meeting um, link to begin the next meeting, which then we will adjourn to executive session, um, then to come back to regular session. So just for your own convenience, we're gonna start here at the special meeting, then go to the regular meeting, to executive session, and then finally back to the regular meeting. If you need any clarification on what to do next at the close of this meeting, please let me know. Um, and I am here to help you with whatever you need this evening. That being said, after the call to order, there is a motion on the agenda this evening, which I'll read out loud. Motion. We, the members of the Wachusett Regional School Districts Committee, express no confidence in Superintendent McCall's management of the district's return to school plan for FY 2021. We call upon the district administration to solicit and hire a competent educational consulting firm within the next 10 business days for the purpose of, one, assessing the district's current remote educational plans through targeted feedback from parents, teachers, students, and administrators, two, providing recommendations for improvement and adjustments that are within the district's reasonable capacity and resources. Three, leveraging district analysis to date and peer district plans, developing a comprehensive return to school plan, which is inclusive but not limited to, A, entry criteria for successful return to school models, blending on-site and remote learning by using specific actions and or metrics, B, Development of a backlog of actions needed with associated timelines and the resource plan in order to facilitate successful entry criteria, which are within the district's control. D, a plan for moving through different modalities of learning, for example, fully remote, hybrid, or blended, as environmental health conditions warrant. E, a communication plan for parents, teachers, students, and school committee members. F, regular monitoring of the district's implementation of the plan, including feedback and retrospective of parents, teachers, students, administrators, and school committee members, and recommendations for improvements. Finally, weekly reporting to the school committee, either written or in person, of the progress, risks, and issues in the development of this plan and regular monitoring. The selection of the educational consulting company shall be subject to the approval of the school committee. Do I have a motion on the floor? So moved. It's been moved by member Dennis. Is there a second? Second. It is sent seconded by member Silva. Member Dennis, you made the motion, so you may speak to the motion first. You're still, you're still muted. There we go, thank you. Thank you. The special meeting and the motion tonight was called at the request of eight members of the school committee, including the chair and the vice chair. The meeting was called in accordance of school committee bylaws, allowing for one third of the membership to call a special meeting. As the maker of this motion, a motion of last resort, I would like to read a statement in its entirety to provide proper context and express my perspective on one, why this motion was made, two, what does the motion mean, and three, what is the path forward? Why was this motion made? On August 5th of this year, just five days prior to the DESE deadline for each district to approve and submit 
a comprehensive reopening plan. A majority of the school committee amended the motion to accept the superintendent's plan and call for, quote, a more sub substantive plan for approval prior to the DESE deadline. Five days later on August 10th, a majority of the committee voted to accept the superintendent's revised plan. It's important to note that several members characterized this plan as a working document and noted several open questions, details, and defects that requested to be answered and addressed in the coming weeks. Such questions focused on the lack of time on learning, clear explanation of how afternoons will be used, details on remote elementary education, and how the hybrid model would be operationalized. To date, these and other concerns have not been sufficiently addressed. Here are some examples. At each of these two meetings, I and other committee members have asked, what are the entry criteria that need to be satisfied by the district in order for students to return to school? This question was repeated at our meeting on August 24th, again at our meeting on August 31st, and again most recently by seven members of the committee on September 14th. We have not received a satisfactory answer to that question. At our meeting on August 24th, I've heard Member Mills and others caution the administration to not ask parents to choose a learning path until there is a clear plan on how it'll be implemented and what the impact will be on each family. I've heard him reiterate that caution at meetings again on August 31st. Minute, if, is up, if you would like to wrap up. I've requested, um, respectfully request Member Weeks, this is a very serious uh, issue and I would respectfully request that I finish my statement. I'm happy to give you one extra minute, but I would like to be fair to the entire committee. So I'm not gonna be able to wrap up in one minute, Chair Weeks, and if it's your intention to uh, rule that I have one minute to finish, then I would respectfully appeal. I believe there's a point of order by the member decision of the chair. I would like to um, appeal the chair's ruling and allow the um, maker of the motion the right to finish their statement. So the full committee can fully hear that statement. So there is a uh, motion on the floor to appeal the chair's ruling that our bylaws for two minutes per person um, is not in order because the maker of the motion has more to say. Is there is a second? Second. There is a second. Um, is there discussion on the motion on the floor? The quick discussion, uh, Chair Weeks, is that um, this is probably the most serious issue that we have to uh, put into effect tonight, uh, an arbitrary two-minute uh, limitation on the context of this motion um, doesn't do us or the community justice in being able to speak to it. I, I would not say it would be arbitrary because it is in our bylaws. It would not be arbitrary if that's a bylaw you wish, wish to change. You can bring that up in management. I would like to raise this to a... Um a motion that we can vote on this if need be. Of course, that, that is within the Roberts Rules of Order. Um, Member Young has his hand. Uh, I'm speaking to the motion for the appeal. Correct. Um, I think we should stick with the two minutes. If other members would like to cede their time to Member Dennis, I think that would be in order um, and allow him to speak longer if they give their time to him. That would be within the rules of order would any member like to cede their time to member dennis well, we... would any member like to cede their time to member dennis member woodland um i'll cede my time okay member woodland has ceded her two minutes you may have an additional two minutes member dennis okay here we go to date, these and other concerns have not been sufficiently addressed. Here are some examples. At each of these two meetings, I and other, excuse me, I've already mentioned that. Um, we've talked about, uh, so four days after the last caution on the second full day of school, school, the superintendent sent a communication to all district families instructing them to select within the next week, a learning pathway, remote or hybrid, for the rest of the school year. He provided a link to the description of the two pathways which were lacking in detail and did not appear to be consistent with the plans discussed prior to the school committee. The issuance and content of the email caught school committee members and teachers by surprise and precipitated broad negative reaction in the community. You've heard many of the parent concerns at the chair's public hearing reading this past Wednesday. What you did not hear were the concerns written by individual teachers in the district, the themes of which included technology tools that do not work, insufficient training, 
poor communication from central office, lack of planning and leadership. The following excerpts paint the picture of the troubles the district is experiencing after less than a week of our return to school. From a high school teacher, I was one of the few faculty members who had the pleasure of serving on the reopening task force. One can imagine my disappointment when it became evident that our remote schedule and hybrid plan do not resemble in any way those we proposed. I feel as though I served on a task force for the sake of creating the appearance that educators had a say when in reality we did not. To add insult to injury, twice in the last week, communication about the district's plans were shared with parents without sharing with educators and building administrators. I found out about this through a parent email asking if I would still be your daughter's teacher when we moved to hybrid. And these plans will ultimately impact how we teach our students. We deserve the professional courtesy of having a look at these plans before being sent to parents. From another high school teacher, the lack of communication from central office is starting to take a toll on the mental health of many teachers in the district. From a group of elementary school teachers in second grade. Thank you, Member Dennis. You've now had an additional two minutes, and we do have a 21 member committee with many people who may have thoughts and ideas on this motion. I once again appeal the ruling of the chair. The, the ruling has been appealed again. Is there a second? Second. It's been appealed and it's been seconded. Is there a discussion on the motion on the floor? We actually didn't vote on it the first time around. Uh, Member Haber. In reading the motion that was sent to us, I had a lot of questions. It didn't seem very clear to me. And I feel that Member Dennis needs the time to explain what he intended by writing this motion and the other signers of the motion for that matter, and to clarify for everyone what exactly it is we're voting on and why he feels it's necessary. I wholeheartedly will give him my time if this appeal does not work, but I think that everyone needs to hear him out as to why we're voting on this. Thank you. Member Lavoie, you have a hand. I would echo Member Haber's um, point, and I would like to hear the, the full justification from Member Dennis. I would also yield my time to Member Dennis if this motion fails. That way he is not interrupted, and the public in this body can get a full um, a full hearing from him without being cut off. I don't think we're doing anybody any service, um, Chair Weeks, by cutting people off. I'm not cutting people off. I'm abiding by the bylaws. Thank you. Um, member Silva. I'd like to reiterate what uh, Member Lavoie said. Um, I do agree that this is such a important topic. We need to give people time. And I also understand that there are, you know, 21 members. I, I understand we want to keep within a time limit. But um, if this appeal doesn't work, I would like to, I would like to give my time to Member Dennis. Okay. Is there further discussion on the motion on the floor? Member Smith. Sorry, I'm opposed to um, appealing what's in appealing that your ruling in that we do have bylaws that we follow. We received a written copy of the motion. I don't think I need any further explanation of, of this. I'm also uncomfortable hearing our superintendent be evaluated through um, the means that's happening right now with the reading of um, the letters that Member Dennis is sharing in the commentary. I feel that that's wholly inappropriate in explaining why he is making a motion um, as he's representing these other viewpoints. So I am not in support of allowing him additional time. Thank you, Member Smith. Are there further hands for the discussion? Yes. Yes, muted. Um, you're muted right now. My name is Michael Long. I'm counsel for Superintendent McCall. Uh, I had a question about whether the committee has a policy for handling what appear to be anonymous complaints. Um, um, that, member, I, I believe Member Dennis has the right to speak as he wishes, um, but I do believe he should be speaking directly to the motion on the floor. Um, and he has given reasoning as to why he made that motion. So I will rule that in order. However, he has now doubled his time as a single member of the committee. Each member of the committee has equal say. That is why we are an elected body. Um, we are not one person or the other. We are a collective body. And that is why we're discussing whether or not he has the ability to overrule my ruling, which has been our president 
for many, many years. And I, I appreciate the courtesy. I, I just, is there a policy about how they handle anonymous complaints? No, there is not. Thank you. Is there further discussion about the ruling on the floor, the amendment on the floor, which is to overrule the chair's ruling that Member Dennis has now exceeded his time, Member Bennett? Um, I would just like to uh, say that I agree with Member Smith, and I think that uh, there's there's really no need to you know drag uh, uh, this out. Um, we know the general uh, idea of what we're we're voting on today, and we've read many letters um, that uh, have been presented on this subject. We don't have to hear uh, any more of these, um, especially if it is meant to humiliate or um, uh, hurt. Thank you, Member Bennett. Are there further hands? Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. This just takes um, a majority vote, not a two thirds, to overrule my ruling. Um, we'll start with Member Amos. Amos, no. Member Ayala. Ayala, no. Member Bennett. Uh, and and the the question again. I'm sorry. The question is to overrule my ruling. Overrule. Member Dennis is, is completed with his time. No. Member Brown? Brown, no. Member Dennis? Yes. Yeah. Member Gustafson? Yes. Member Haber? Yeah. Sorry, Sherry, couldn't hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, could you, now I think there's some background noise. Member Inver? Member, no. Member Kirchenbaum? Kirchenbaum, no. Member Lavoy? Lavoy, yes. Member Longbelil? Longbelil, no. Member Mills? Mills, yes. Member Mitchell? Mitchell, no. Member Otmar? Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, no. Member Silva? Silva, yes. Member Smith? Smith, no. Member Williamson? Williamson, no. Member Woodland? Woodland, yes. Member Young? Young, no. And the chair abstains. Um, by my count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve no's to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses. So the motion fails. Um, at this point, I do believe Member Haber and Member Lavoy said they would cede their time. Member Haber said that first. So, Member Dennis, you may have an additional two minutes. Thank you. So, I will forego um, again the the um, the excerpts from um, from the teachers. Um, we certainly have all uh, received them, and again, I think that they speak to the theme we've talked about. In the absence of any evident plan by the administration to provide clarity and feedback in the community, another special meeting was called by the school committee for this past Wednesday. It was clear through the administration's presentation that critical planning details have not been made and high level plans are not thought through and seemingly changed on the fly. For example, the synchronous asynchronous learning time split for middle school and high school has changed dramatically on Wednesday from what was described in the email on Friday. It is unclear how the latest model will be supported. The remote only and hybrid plan for elementary students Initially, a virtual learning academy of one teacher has never been discussed with either school committee or teachers, raises serious concerns regarding time on learning, as well as significant implementation challenges. The pledge to not change teachers mid-year and maintain an equal balance between on-site and off-site during hybrid is nearly impossible, given how class lists were developed at the start of the school year and the plan to develop cohorts. The charge of further detailed plans would come from building principals is indicative that the administration believes that sufficient guidance from central office has been provided in to ensure a cohesive and consistent plan across the district. This is neither realistic nor equitable. It has become clear that the implementation and refinement of the district's return to school plan continues to lack sufficient detail, cohesion, and collaboration with no pathway for remedy prior to returning students to school. The absence of proper planning is putting teachers, parents, and students in distress. A change in approach and a mandate to do so is needed. What is this motion? 
This motion is a call to action to change our approach in the refinement and implementation of a plan to return to school and a mandate to do so. It calls to leverage existing work, including those done within our district, as well as plans far more detailed and advanced for peer districts. This motion is not about dismissing the superintendent from his job, but narrowly focuses on solving planning defects we find ourselves facing today. It calls to bring resources to bear in a timely manner to Number ensure our for the third time. Um, Member Lavoy, do you still? <clears throat> Member Dennis, I uh, yield my time to him. Thank you. This plan calls to bring resources to bear in a timely manner to ensure our students can have the best educational experience possible and that we are meeting the needs of all students given the circumstance of the pandemic. This is not happening today. What is the path forward? I've had the opportunity to speak to two retired superintendents who are very familiar with return to school plans developed by other districts. They offer these points of advice. One, contact Glenn Kutcher at the Mass Association of School Committees to ask for qualified, capable individuals who have broad educational management experience. Such people might be retired superintendents, perhaps residing within our own district. Two, highly leverage the work done by peer districts and become thought partners with their leadership. A regional school district such as Tantapqua has developed a comprehensive model and planning details for providing options to students to return to school. Other peer districts who have fully developed plans include Monte Tech, Quabbin, and Shrewsbury. Three, form a working group among the school committee and key administrators to actively and quickly formulate logistical plans and test them. Four, finally, communicate, communicate, communicate. This is a motion of last resort. Members of this committee have repeatedly called for an open, communicative, transparent, and inclusive process for our return to school plans. This motion focuses on the solution that, to that problem and provides a mandate to do so in a timely way in the best interests of our students, parents, and teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Member Dennis. And to those once um, that seated their time, um, to member Lavoie, he had 27 seconds left. So if you'd like to use those later in the meeting, you're welcome to do so. Um, I have a hand by member Mills. Hi, so my concern is that there's two separate motions here. And the second is what I care about. When we returned to school, we had far more robust plan for remote education. This is not what we saw at first, but rather what we saw after feedback in a special meeting and with much hard work from teachers and administrations. I asked one to expect to see a robust hybrid plan and was told October. I know there's some of the committee strongly encouraged the administration to not ask parents to make a decision uh, until they had more information, but I was mildly, we shall say, frustrated to get an email two Fridays ago that did just that with four pages of vague details followed by a short deadline. Uh, last week, I think our presentation didn't give us enough more detail for people to make decisions. Uh, central office is short staffed in good times. These aren't good times. I'm on board with the idea to bring a consultant in to help. This is not a sign of weakness. Good organizations bring in consultants when especially help is needed. Districts around us are making mistakes with hybrids, having success with hybrid, we can learn from them. Hiring a consultant isn't a simple thing. Usually you interview many and many, and building that relationship takes time. The chair and superintendent will need to make a plan to make this work, but I think that's where we are, uh, particularly with, with communication. <laughs> the first part of the motion is different, a no confidence vote. I'm not in favor of that. Even if we hire a consultant, you need an administration to interpret and execute that plan. And a no confidence vote makes that implementation nearly impossible and time is running out. I want us to focus on getting this right, not on using this moment to undermine central office. Therefore, I wanna make a motion to amend the motion on the floor. My motion would be to strike, express no confidence in Superintendent McCall's management of the district's return to school plans for fiscal year 21 and replace with express concern about the status of the district's return the school plans for the 2021 academic year. I strike the word competent from the next line. We obviously don't want to hire an incompetent consulting firm, and this seems like an unnecessary addition. Second. Second. There is a second. It's been seconded um, quite a bit. Um, uh, Member Mills, I just want to reread your amendment to the to the committee to make sure we have it correct. That you are wishing to strike from the motion on the floor. Um, express no confidence in Superintendent McCall's management of the district's return to school plans for FY 2021, and to replace that, express concerns with Dr. McCall, Superintendent McCall's management of the district. Uh, no, actually, what I said was express concern about the status of the district's return to school plans for the 2021 academic year. Okay, 
express concern about the district's return to school plans for the 2021 school year? Academic year, yes. Okay. And we would also like to strike the word confident from hiring, hiring a consultant. Yes. Okay. So that is the motion on the floor that's been seconded. This is open for debate. Um, are there members that wish to raise their hand regarding this particular amendment? So member Shapiro has her hand up first. Um, for clarity, can we can you please post the new amended motion in the chat? Is that possible? I will do my best to type it correctly. Actually, um, Member Mills, if you wouldn't mind typing it so I don't make an error in your words. With with your permission, I'll, I can do that. I would thank you for that. Thank you, Member Shapiro. Member Woodland also has her hand raised. Sorry, I didn't think I was, I was next. Um, the I uh, actually have a question for Ken, if through the chair. Um, yes. The uh, you make a difference between um, academic and fiscal year. Is there a reason why? No, I was just focusing on the. I just chose that language instead. It's, it, it seemed more because I was worried about the kids in the school more than the fiscal calendar. Thank you. Um, Member Kirschenbaum has her hand next. Lori, I think you're muted still. I know. Life in Zoom land. I still, I still can't hear you. The difference between Zoom and Google Meets. Uh, hang on here. Uh, I support the uh, the amendment to uh, wording here. Uh, I see no reason to intertwine improperly intertwine these two issues. Uh, one, uh, I see a no confidence vote against the superintendent and a motion to support the expenditure for a consulting firm to assist in our reopening planning as two separate and totally distinct issues. Um, I uh, support this motion. I reject uh, the fact that we're trying to um, complicate things and distract. I, we really need to get back to the business of our of, of getting our schools opened, and this is just a distraction to have that wording in there. Thank you. Thank you member Kirsten Baum. Member Amos. Hi, thanks. Um, <clears throat> just to add a little bit of clarification to help support the um, member mills new motion um, in terms of from a perspective of government with public voting bodies a formal motion and vote of no confidence in the leader of a public organization um, is actually where members of a deliberative body indicate they no longer support a leader so specifically a formal vote of no confidence um, by definition generally results in the removal of that leader a vote of censure is a rebuke that does not result in um, potential dismissal of the leader. So the a vote of no confidence is about removal. So the email, the email then discussed explanations of the motion um, of no confidence actually describes censure outcomes rather than no confidence outcome. So a motion of no confidence does not appear to be the appropriate action. And member Mills amendment appears to be the more appropriate action based on the um, desired outcomes that were explained. Thank you, Member Amos, for your clarification. Member Ayala. Um, just to be clear, the so this is only saying that the 2020-21 year is what we're going to worry about in this motion, right? My interpretation of the motion would be that. Correct for the school year. Okay, thank you. Member Gustafson. So my initial um, response is that I, I think it it's frustrating that we have not had an opportunity to discuss the primary motion as discussed and we're talking about changing it. Um, before others have a chance to weigh in on that. So I, I hate to do that prematurely, um, although I don't disagree with the need to uh, take action. Um, so I'm conflicted about this because I, I, I hate to cut off discussion when we haven't had a chance to really discuss the main thoughts in this. Um, 
So I'm conflicted and I'll just offer that. I, I do appreciate, remember, Amos just said about no confidence versus censure. Perhaps that's another discussion we need to be having. Um, but I, I, I think I don't want to speak to the main motion because that's not what we're discussing right now. So I'm trying to be careful with my words. But I just think there are are elements that perhaps need need or could be discussed. And by just jumping to the amendment, we are eliminating the opportunity to discuss some of the key important points um, that might come out in that discussion. So that's my comments. Thank you, Member Long Boyle. Um, I just want to say that um, I think that uh, to that I agree with the amendment. I think that uh, we, as a school committee, decided to approve the broad outlines of a plan. Um, the superintendent has worked to fill in the details. I don't think everything has gone perfectly or as, as we all might like, but I think it's neither fair nor wise at this point to undermine the superintendent. Um, that will only make things worse, not better. Um, I do still think that the that the language regarding the consultant is is somewhat broad, but um, I intend to support it. Um, I think that we need to be considerate of our resources in hiring a consultant, considering that we've laid off teachers and and other staff. Um, I'd like to make sure that any any funds spent on a consultant um, are done with uh, the district's. Uh, the demands on the district's overall resources in mind. I do intend to support the motion, the the um, the amendment to the motion. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Member Kirschenbaum had a point of order. Just wanted to make sure we were speaking to the motion on the floor, which is the motion to amend. Correct. The motion to amend the the first motion on the floor. Correct. Yes. Um, Member Shapiro, you are next. Um, so I, um, I'm in favor of this motion, this motion to amend. However, I was wondering if there is an opportunity to add an, an additional piece to it, or if that has to be another. Um, we could get a secondary amendment. So if we approve this amendment on the floor, we can go back and amend the new motion again. Okay. Um, <laughs> No, I'm not sure. Um, what what I'm concerned about is the um, the we the focus of this amendment is the beginning part. I have a um, concern about the end where it says the selection of the educational consulting company shall be subject to approval of a school committee. Um, and so I'm wondering uh, how exactly that person who that exact person no. would exactly report to. Member Shapiro, so when when the discussion for the amendment concludes, we can circle mm -hmm. back to discussion of. Um, other parts of the motion. Other parts of the motion. Okay. Yep. All right. I'll, put, I'll put, your, put yourself back in line once this discussion concludes. Okay. I understand. Thank you. No problem. Uh, member Ember. So first I want to thank Matt for uh, having my back. Um, and, and, uh, but I do want to speak to this motion. And in fact, my goal was to make the motion that was almost similar to, to uh, Ken's. Um, Again, I support the, the notion that we hire some folks to, to help us figure out specifically what are we going to do, when are we going to do it, who's going to do it, um, under what conditions do kids come back. Uh, I think all of that's really, really important. Under what conditions do we send kids back home? Um, and, and I think having professional consultants do that is, is important for us. Our, our staff are way too lean, the, the administrative structure. Remember, remember Amber, just to remind you, just to support the motion. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bottom line here. The, the real question will become, is it implementable? I mean, can we in two weeks find a consulting firm who could again, actually I'm do this? I hate cutting you off, but again, we just have to talk about Tom's amendment, and then we can go back to talking to the entire motion. Okay, no worries. I support it. Uh, I figure we got to figure out the details. Thank you. All right, Member Lavoie. All right, I am I am hesitant to support it um, for a couple of points. One that Member Amos made, and I would echo what Member Gustafson said. And I just want to call to this committee's attention that we've seen three out of the four last speakers kind of cross the line to talk about the original motion. 
And I would like to hear their perspective. So I think we've jumped the gun with an amendment and I just like to echo that because it's apparent people have thoughts on the original motion. I would like to hear those. Of course, and we will. Thank you, Member Lavoie. Um, Member Christian, Mom, were those your points of order? I'm assuming? Yeah. Member Brown, to the amendment, please. Hi, yeah, um, so the motion on the floor right now is to strike the no confidence. Correct. Replace it with the express concern about the status of the district. Keep the language in about hiring an outside consultant, correct? Correct, that is the motion on the, that is the amendment on the floor. Okay, so um, I like the direction it's going, but I do not even support hiring an outside um, company to come in. Um, we have spent a lot of time in this district. So, I, 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 so we just need to speak to the, the motion, yeah. the amended motion on the floor, which is to strike the language. If we can just speak to striking the language of no confidence, we'll then circle back to the remainder of the motion once we're finished. Okay, thank you. Member Williamson. I, I put my hand down. I'm, my thoughts were to the original or to the, to the motion, so I'll wait. Member Woodland to the amendment only, please. Yes, to the amendment. Um, so my question is if um, it is prudent to quickly take out, uh, to strike the no confidence uh, at this moment without more discussion, just because it's September 29th, uh, and this is the first time that I've heard earlier tonight from uh, Superintendent McCall that perhaps more help would be necessary. We've had meetings every two weeks, and so not having that foresight to ask of us, of, of this body, that more help is necessary, it seems um, like from leading from behind. And that's my concern with uh, changing the wording. My mind is not made up. I do not know which way I will fall, to be honest but I think that it's worth discussing if at this point we're this far into the game that we're still trying to figure out how to play the plan. There doesn't seem to be that plan. And that worries me and does not fill me with confidence. Um, if that is too strong of a motion for this time, I, I can definitely see the merits in censure versus no confidence, but um, I think that I would really like to hear other members take on that part thank you thank you and i would actually like to offer my apologies right now um it is 707 p.m we are now late for our regular meeting which is um I concurred with um masc yesterday that that is okay but we should have had a, a motion to extend um the special meeting um if there would be a point on the floor that would be a moved. Um, it's been moved second, second. Second. We need to extend to 7.30, this portion of our meeting. Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? Yes. Member Bennett? Yes. Member Brown? Brown, yes. Member Dennis? Dennis, yes. Member Gustafson? Gustafson, yes. Member Haber? Haber, yes. Member Ember? Ember, yes. Member Christian Baum? Person Baum, yes. Member Lavoy. Lavoy, yes. Member Longoleo. Longoleo, yes. Member Mills. Mills, yes. Member Mitchell. Mitchell, yes. Member Otmar. Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Silva, yes. Member Smith. Smith, yes. Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, yes. Member Young. Young, yes. And the chair votes yes. We're extended to 7.30. Um, so we just heard from Member Woodland, Member Silva. On the amendment only, please. Yes. Um, I, I'd like to reiterate what Member Woodland said. Uh, I think that I am not for separating it as of yet because I'd like to hear a discussion. Um, I know I've heard many different opinions um, in this school committee and previous school committee meetings where the, the reasons of going forward without, you know, um, certain evaluations is because we've heard reasons of, well, uh, you know, we're at, we're at a, a, you know, a, 
a critical time in our district right now. We can't do this. But the way I see it is during this pandemic shows leadership. And there was a lack of leadership in this process. And we have, as members, been asking for details about the hybrid for a while now. And the four, we need someone with foresight with such a size district for the safety of our children and for the safety of our teachers. So I am opposed to, um, to breaking up this motion. I'd like to hear the rest of the discussion before we go down that road. Thank you, Member Silva. Uh, Member Christianbaum has her hand. Thank you. I'd like to clarify again uh, the reason that I support this particular motion to amend. And that is what we have here is a very large and lengthy motion that improperly intertwines two distinct issues. One is whether or not we have confidence in our leadership to, to do the work of, of getting our students educated. The other one is the resources that, that some would like to devote to having consultations to open up. By putting these two, and believe me, I understand that I, I question why that word, that phrase, no confidence was put in there because my understanding is that people are quite well aware of how that phrase is interpreted and how that phrase is used in education. So I firmly believe that these are two issues. Now, if people wish to have a no confidence conversation down the road, that is something we can take up in executive session. That is a motion that can be made through proper channels with evidence and so forth. If you want to have a conversation about devoting resources to, to, um, to spend, resources that we don't have to, to spend on consultation firms, then we can have that conversation. But we need to divorce these two issues from one another and have conversations about each one. And the, the amendment allows us to do that. By keeping them together, it improperly intertwines these two ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Member Kirschenbaum. Member Smith? I'd like to um, support what Member Kirschenbaum has said twice now. And I would also like to call the question. So Member Smith has called the question. Is there a second? Second. Second. This uh, is not debatable, so we'll do a roll call vote to call the question. Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? Ayala, yes. Member Bennett? Yes. Member Brown? Brown, no. Member Dennis? Dennis, yes. Member Gustafson? Are we voting on the amendment or to call the question? Call the question of the amendment. So we're not voting on the amendment yet? Yes, this would, no, this is not the amendment. This is to move to a vote on the amendment. Okay, then yes. Member Haber? Haber, yes. Member Imber? Imber, yes. Member Kirschenbaum? Yes. Member Lavoie? Is there a motion to call the question in Robert's Rules of Order? There, are, there is. I'm looking at it right now. I thought it was a motion to move the question. I could be wrong. Yes. Member Longbelio? Longbelio, yes. Member Mills? Mills abstain. Member Mitchell? Mitchell, yes. Member Otmar? Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, yes. Member Silva? Silva, yes. Member Smith? Smith, yes. Member Williamson? Williamson, yes. Member Woodland? Woodland, no. Member Young. Young, yes. The chair abstains and the motion passes. So the question is now being called. So the motion on the floor is to amend the motion uh, sent by Member Dennis. And I'm going to read Member Mill's words again. You can scroll up in your chat if you'd like to read them with me. And it is to, ex to strike the term, express no confidence in Super McCall's management of the district's return to school plans for FY21 and replace with express concerns about the status of the district's return to school plans for the 2021 academic year, and to also to strike the word confident from the next line. That is the question on the floor. Is there a motion? Are we ready to vote? All right, so the motion has been called for a vote. Um, if everybody can mute until they're called upon. Member Amos? 
in this yes. Member Ayala. Ayala, no. Member Bennett. Uh, this is to amend. Yep. Yes. Member Brown. This is to amend the motion. Are we the voting on the motion? We are voting on the amendment, yes. The To amend the motion. Correct. Brown, yes. Member Dennis. Dennis, no. Member Gustafson. Gustafson, no. Member Haber. Haber, no. Member Inver. Inver, yes. Member Kirchenbaum. Kirchenbaum, yes. Member Lavoy. Lavoy, no. Member Longbolio. Longbolio, yes. Member Mills. Mills, yes. Member Mitchell. Mitchell, yes. Member Altmar. Altmar, yes. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Silva, no. Member Smith. Smith, yes. Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Um, Woodland, no. Member Young. Young, yes. And the chair is going to abstain from this vote. I'm going to count the tally. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen in the affirmative. So the motion does pass. The original motion on the floor is now amended. We can now circle back to discussion of the original motion on the floor as amended by the school committee. Would anybody like to speak to the motion on the floor as amended? Um, Linda and Michael, if you can mute, that would be helpful. Uh, member input. All right. So, so the, uh, again, my question is, how feasible is this? I mean, who, who could possibly do this? When could they do it? I mean, I think it's a great idea. And I, I, I think, you know, one of the things that we do need is somebody who can help with very specific planning to develop who's going to do what, when are they going to do it, um, under what circumstances, when is this going to happen, when do we have to turn around? We, we need that plan and we don't have it, but who can give that to us in the next uh, two weeks and is that feasible? Um, so that's really my question. It's, it's for information about uh, the devil being in the details. Thank you, Member um, We will now go to, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to read the order in which things came in. Um, actually, Member Otmar might have beat you by a second there. Um, member Otmar, your two minutes. Um, actually, uh, Member Ember kind of really got at one of the questions I was going to ask is about the, because I, I uh, approve of the idea of trying to bring some extra help into what we're doing in regards to this matter. Um, Mike, I, I had kind of the same questions about the ability to affect that within the 10 day time period. So um, that was one of the questions I was going to get at. So I'll, I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Member Otmar. Uh, Member Mitchell, you came in right after. Thank you. Um, I, I guess my, uh, very similar to, to some of the other statements, I think this is an unrealistic expectation. Um, I think the last time there was a global pandemic was 1913. So to actually think about um, a consultation group that could uh, actually provide guidance versus the people that are actually in our schools and have been administering um, through the last six to eight months, I think is actually a waste of money. Um, so I, you know, I think that this is, um, I'm glad we amended the amendment and I don't agree with the moving forward. Uh, I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Member Mitchell. Member Ayala? Okay, so I I really was not in favor of the no confidence vote just off the bat. Um, 
but I did think those were two separate things, but I think separating them, but making this, uh, the second amendment that, that was made about um, hiring a consulting firm, I think it just needs to be broader. Um, I think this drastic measure of having this meeting is opening the lines of communication. I think the, the district has lacked that for some time after reading multitude of emails and comments from teachers, educators, uh, principals, stakeholders. I think um, hearing everything really, really should hopefully open the communication. Um, that being said, um, looking at hiring a firm, it's costly, I'm sure. Um, I think we need to look at other creative ways of having help for our administration. Um, we really need to be looking at what the principals are doing. Um, there okay. needs to be, the, like, we need more feedback from the principals. We need, there's a lot to this, I think. Um, and in order for our hybrid program to work, I really think we have to think outside the box. Um, is there someone else to help administration that isn't going to be so costly? Um, I guess that's pretty much what I have to say on that. Um, thank you. Thank you, Member Ayala. Member Long Belial. Linda, you're muted. My apologies. My Mac is very loud. I know it roars when I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> um, your, your so go ahead when you're um, ready you know i'm honestly sitting here debating whether to make a much more scaled down motion um the superintendent has the authority to hire to hire a consultant if he should find such consultant helpful um and so i think at this point i won't make a motion but i would say that i'm certainly open to having the superintendent hire a consultant if he if he feels that would be helpful um, and it with, as long as it's doable with it within a reasonable budget, um, as I stated previously, so I'm going to hold off for the moment, but I'm, I may be raising my hand again. <laughs> That's okay. I can come right back to you. Thank you. Member Kirschenbaum. Thank you. Uh, you know, shortly after the pandemic started and Massachusetts shut down, the government kept saying that things would reopen in two weeks, then another, then another, until finally the call was made that schools should not reopen. No warning, no planning, no funding for the punting that districts had to do to continue some semblance of education for our kids. Fast forward to today, we have a district chronically underfunded, understaffed, and under-resourced even prior to the pandemic, and still we have no relief from the state to support support reinventing and implementing a new educational plan. We must remember that all of the regional school district, that we are a regional school district and have unique circumstances around providing transportation to all students without appropriate reimbursement from the state. And still the state mandates that we pay transportation companies for services not rendered because they refuse to use rainy day funds or allocate additional funding to use for this rainy day like no other. Now we have members of this, this committee some whose intentions I question, willing to throw the superintendent under the proverbial bus. It seems we all want the same things here. We want more. We want our kids back in school. We want normal. But the really bad guy here, but the real bad guy here is the pandemic and the sad state of underfunding this district has endured even before the pandemic. Now looking at this motion, if we have the money to support our administration with a consultation firm, then why wasn't that proposed four months ago? Instead, we waited and now we're trying to hang the superintendent out to dry. If we have the money to spend, then why not hire back teachers and support staff to teach our kids? Why? Because plain and simple, we don't have the money. I see this motion, as I said, as two different motions. One we already took care of. However, I think that our teachers, our principals, our support staff, and administration are working tirelessly to make this year the best it can be. Is it perfect? No, but I don't see any superintendent skating through unscathed. Finally, with our limited financial resources to fund a consulting firm? No, I'm not convinced Member that- Member Lavoie, you're out of time. Thank you. And Member Lavoie, I would say that you were out of order flashing your timer in front of me as I am timing everyone myself. 
Remember, Kirshenbaum yeah. Bomb has spoken multiple times for way over two minutes, and you can't remember Dennis Hoffa every time. Remember, so. LaVoy, you were out of order. We, Everyone had two minutes to speak to the original motion on the floor. When we went to the amendment, I gave other people time to speak. Uh, you are out of order at this point. Member Shapiro. Thank you. Um, so good planning requires benchmarks and deadlines, okay? The details proposed in this motion, I think are a good starting point of a list of what needs to be done by our superintendent and his team of staff, his principal and teachers, the people who know our district. We need to set reasonable deadlines for when all this can be done, work with him on those deadlines, find out what he thinks it can, can be done, as well as good communication structure to report when things don't go as planned. Um, I wanna find out from Superintendent McCall what we can do to help him manage the crisis. I wanna give him additional help with the expertise that he needs to answer our questions, plan for the unknown, and lead this district through. Um, to member Ayala's point, I'm not totally sure that we need a consultant to replace Superintendent McCall or to consult. I think that Dr. McCall could use additional staff member, maybe a COVID crisis management assistant who will be hired for the year at not a consultant fee, but as actually a staff member, a member of the team work with us who knows and is familiar with this type of thing. Um, experience with crisis management to work under Dr. McCall's guidance and knowledge of the district to get us the information we're asking for and make a successful plan for the future of our district. Because the implications of what is happening this year is not going to be just this year. It's going to be for years to come and having a consultant come in, tell us what to do and then take our money and leave, I don't think is a good investment. Um, that's my two minutes. Thank you. 17 seconds to spare. Well done. Thank you. Member Williamson. Um, so as a, a former administrator in the, in the district, I can speak to the fact that our central office is consistently understaffed because we are consistently underfunded. Um, and that's in good times. Um, I have seen them do the work of an army um, with only a few. And I think that <coughs> providing some type of support is, is the way that we should be approaching this. Um, as a building administrator myself, if I have staff members who are trying to do something and there are obstacles in the way, as their principal, I come in and I try to support them in any way that I can support them. And whether it is hiring, hiring a firm, if we can afford it, um, or you know, some other creative way of coming at this from a supportive way, um, I think that is the best approach that we can take as a committee. Um, you know, given the circumstances that we have in you know as a pandemic, um, I think we need to approach this um, with more support. Thank you. Thank you, and I, and I apologize, Member Lavoie. I did not see your point of order. I was um, making sure I was keeping people in order to speak. Um, what is your point of order? Member Gustafson had made a point of order that I think was ignored. She was kind of in the I don't know what her point of order was, but I saw that and I didn't see it addressed. It was about a speaker at the time, um, sticking to the agenda item rather than the original motion. Um, however, I uh, also note that it's 728, so can I make that point of order to extend? That would be a very appropriate time to do so. Second. We didn't second it, um, so we are extending now to 8 p.m. Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? Mute button. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett? Bennett, yes. Member Brown? Brian, yes. Member Dennis. Dennis, yes. Member Bethesda. Justice and yes. Member Haver. Haver, yes. Member Imber. Imber, yes. Member Kirschenbaum. Kirschenbaum, yes. Member uh, Lavoie. Lavoie, yes. Member Longville. Longville, yes. Member Mills. Mills, yes. Member Mitchell. Mitchell, yes. Member Otmar. Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Silva, yes. Member Smith. Smith, yes. Member Williamson. 
Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, yes. Member Young? Young, yes. The chair votes yes. We are now extended to 8 p.m. Um, in my order, um, it is now Member Brown's turn. So my, my concern is that it, it's money, time, and results. Um, we are the largest regional in Massachusetts, and the matrix that uh, our members keep talking about has to really do with DESE's guidelines. And so on the busing one child per bench, the three feet of the desk, my concern is um, on the outside uh, consultant, they would probably come to the same results that we have for our reopening plan. And we have gone to the superintendent in the past and asked him to accelerate uh, the date and he has. And so my my concern is that if, if we go down this path, um, we can't afford it. Um, and, you know, really only gives us two weeks. Uh, we have to negotiate with the teachers union on whatever they decide. And um, again, the results, um, you know, I look at it in many different ways and with the DESE guidelines that we really can't um, I go against, um, it, it limits us being the size of district we are. Thanks. Thank you. Member Bennett. Um, okay, so, hi. Um, I have a, a couple of questions for for just everyone to kind of ponder in this. Um, and uh, the first one, um, or the first point that I want to make has been uh, uh, discussed uh, before, and that is about management and what management is. Um, and every book that I've read on it, uh, makes uh is is giving the job to management to help um uh, employees uh do their best and uh i think that that is what we are charged to do is help uh the superintendent do his best and i'm wondering of the the eight um who have have signed uh this how many have asked uh, Dr. McCall, uh, what what they could do to to help him personally, um, and uh, I'm wondering um, how long it will take for uh, the team uh, that that helped create this plan, this massive team that helped to create our our plan to go back to school. Um, how long is it going to take them to? talk to a consultant and get that consultant up to speed with whatever they need to know uh, in order to make decisions. Uh, and um, in that time that they are explaining everything that needs to get done and everything that they have gone over or in, and considered, that is wasted time um, and energy that could be uh, given directly to improving the plan itself. Also, um, I'm wondering why we're asking uh, I'm sorry, Dr. McCall. Your, your two minutes okay. is over. Okay. Member Gustafson. Okay. Um, <clears throat> try and sort out my original comments, which were on the full original motion. So I will try to do this quickly. Um, I will first say, because it's been asked that I, I was one that signed the request. Um, so I feel like I need to address that. Um, for me, this has never been about a mandate on any particular reopening plan, which we did vote on in August. Um, I, I happened to vote no, but I still supported the general plan. I voted no in part because we didn't have enough detail. Um, for me, this is more about leadership and implementation of plans and lack of planning. Um, I acknowledge there's a lot of changing guidelines throughout the summer. I've actually been defending that um, perspective to anyone who writes me all summer. Um, I can say that we've requested numerous times information on things from budget to staffing to specific information plans. We have asked, do you need more staff in particular areas um, to implement what we're doing as the summer went on? We asked that as recently as August and even our last meeting. Um, 
we've not gotten any specific requests. We've not gotten any details about our budget and um, there's still some holes there, which is another discussion for our next meeting. Um, but the, there, we've asked if there are needs that are not being met in our original staffing planning for the year because of the pandemic. And we have never gotten an answer that says we need this specific position, this would be helpful. Um, so it is concerning to me. Um, in July and August, we asked for a specific remote learning plan um, when we decided not to use, utilize the state plans. And we asked, what do you have in mind? How are we gonna meet these needs? How are we gonna plan so students are not changing teachers mid-year? Um, and are we going to survey our staff before we vote on this or our families before we vote on this? And we were told, well, we can't do another survey now. Um, so there's a pattern of not having enough information when we need it. And in my mind also, ignoring some of the information we have. The task force recommendations were not really acted on um, in the hybrid no, planning. The teachers and school time. committee were not no, notified the details in the email on Friday. And then the number, presentation number Wednesday out of contradicted a lot number of those details. Ten, you're, you're out of time. Okay. So that's that's my concern that if we don't thank hire some, if you. we don't, we've thank given them a chance to act and we have not gotten answers. So I'm still concerned yeah. about the process going forward, but I have an open mind about what the conversation will bring. Member Young, you have the floor. Thank you. So I, I mean, this whole, this whole process is frustrating. Everything today is frustrating. Um, but I mean, so, so right now with the motion on the floor, we're expecting to ask administration to spend their time over the next two weeks looking for a consulting firm, bring them in, have them solicit feedback, run them through how everything runs in the district over the next, what, month, month and a half, to have them come up with a plan of what we're doing. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just not possible to get this all done before hybrid starts. You know, we need to remember that the district administration had focused on the remote plan first and then going to hybrid in January. You know, this committee, urged the district to move that whole process up. And they did, they moved it up so they would start second quarter instead of third quarter, which is great. Um, but now we're upset that the plan isn't 100% complete. I mean, we, we're just never happy. Um, I mean, there's flaws to the plan. It's being worked on, you know, as I understand it, it's, it's changing every day, it's getting updated. Um, and, you know, I, I absolutely am in favor of, you know, whatever assistance superintendent and central office needs, but I don't I don't see how we can go and say go hire a consulting firm to do that. You know, Dr. McCall has been saying that central office is severely understaffed for years since I started on this committee. Um, you know, but this year we're laying staff off and that are actually providing you know direct services to students. How how can we expect him to come to us and ask for additional staff or consulting? You know, saying that it's a lack of leadership and foresight that he didn't say, oh, I need a consulting firm. It's just, just wrong. So, you know, are we ready to lay off more teachers? Do we have that list of who we want to lay off so that we can hire a consulting firm? You know, or should we just provide our support and assistance? You know, if there's money out there, let them go out and hire Number someone Young? to assist. Member Young, you're out of time. Member Woodland, you're next. So I think that it's a little bit of a straw man to be talking about how we're underfunded all of this time. We actually don't have great information about that. I, I do believe we are underfunded, but when we've asked for precise information about how and revenues and budget expenses, we have never gotten sufficient answers and we let it go and think maybe next month, next meeting, we'll have more of the information. Maybe next meeting, we'll have more of the information that we're asking. And the same happened with remote planning. We did not exactly focus on remote planning as well as I do believe it is going. I want to be clear that my goal is not about having every person in the building, uh, regardless of metrics. I want us to be careful, I want us to be safe. And I think that remote, no matter what, is going to happen for all of our students because of those who, try, who want to stay, versus those remote days of hybrid, we have to have a remote plan. But I do not believe that it was a well thought out plan that uh, was um, focused on at the expense of hybrid. What I saw was a huge focus on PPE and um, HVAC uh, in the 
in the last uh, few months versus earlier on in the summer when we did know it. We also have seen conflicting dates on when things would be known. We were said about the, the if we talk about HVAC, the, um, the samplings would be taken, they would be available around uh, October 14th, but then we have an uh, email from SPED that says that you'll get a firm date, uh, a firm confirmation about air quality by October 1st to know if October 5th is ready. These are all conflicting pieces of communication and I have no idea which one is true. I really hope that the safety is there, but it shows that this communication is not happening well. And to me, that means that there's not a plan. And if we don't have the funds, that's fine, but we don't have evidence that we don't have the funds. And that is very troubling. Uh, and that's oh, perfect. Oh my Lord, literally on the buzzer. Well done, Member Woodland. Uh, Member Silva. First of all, I'd like to say that I would love it if tomorrow we had a great plan and we could offer the hybrid plan to all parents and kids and teachers and everyone feel safe returning back to school. Uh, what my concern is, and uh, before I proceed, Megan, I just wanna ask, can I mention something that we had heard at management subcommittee or is that not allowed? Um, I, as long, you need to be speaking to the motion on the floor. Well, it's regarding the motion. Um, Go for well, it. it's regarding the motion, the fact of us, you know, hiring a consultant. Um, I, I will allow it. Okay. Well, we keep hearing a lot of comments being said of we just don't have the funds. And, we, and I really agree that, yes, a few months ago we were talking about, you know, removing teachers from our district. But in management subcommittee, what I was shocked at was one of the solutions of some of the classrooms was they were going to teach with the windows open and the heat was just going to keep going. So as far as I'm concerned, and I asked, how much is that going to cost? And there was no uh, answer. It was not calculated. We have no estimate. So as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather spend our money into getting a consultant who can actually help us figure out which way we can afford and open safely. And, if we're if we're going to open with classrooms with the windows open, well, what how exactly are the teachers and the students going to be learning in such a cold and, and uncomfortable environment? It's it's not practical. It's uh, incomplete. So the way that question was answered, as an example, um, I feel that we need someone to come in and help and give their expertise. And not that I'm looking for making our district into a bankrupt uh, you know situation, but I don't see any other way going forward because our questions just haven't been answered. Thank you, Member Silva. Member Amos? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I strongly support pushing for answers, details, and increased communication. Um, and I think the idea of bringing in extra help is a very valid idea. However, I think that spending the time uh, and spending money on a consultant is not a good use of our resources right now, all things considered. My view is that we know what we need to focus on. We already know what needs to happen. And I believe that hiring an outside consultant as a consultant myself, there's such a, um, you have a ramp up time. I just feel like it is going to complicate um, an already complicated situation. I agree with member Mitchell and the others about feasibility of doing this in that time frame. I agree with member Ayala about um, being creative to find ways to move forward. Um, I also agree with mem member Long Leal that the superintendent can hire a consultant if he feels it will benefit the district's efforts. I just am concerned that we're putting a lot of stock in the idea that a consultant can magically fix this and make all these answers appear. I'm done. Thank you, member Amel. So in our order in the chat right now, there are a couple people who have already spoken. Um, I'm gonna go to those who haven't spoken yet and then we can circle back to hands. Um, for a second round. So Member Haber, I don't believe you spoke to the original motion yet. Thank you. Um, I also don't see where we're going to get the money for a consultant. Um, I would like to encourage administration to utilize the task force. Uh, I was pleased to be a part of a group of over 30 stakeholders. They were divided into areas of expertise. They came up with a bare bones plan. They're familiar with what's going on already because each one of them has a stake in what's going on. Um, they are equipped to help fix and help answer all of the current issues. They are building principals and teachers and medical professionals. There are people who understand about our HVAC units. I don't understand. I have asked multiple times since July when the task force would be brought back and I kept getting told soon. Um, still, we have not been called back. 
and I think that it's completely underutilized. Um, the motion overall, the biggest thing that it says to me is that we need to hold administration accountable. And that's where I would like to let it lie. I think that really what we're all asking for is for answers and to be held accountable to deadlines and, um, and to make sure that all of the questions, we have the answers to them. There's multiple questions from our question sessions. I want to see that FAQ that was promised last week. We still don't have it. So if we can move forward in that way, I'd be happy. Thank you, Member Haber. Um, in my order, I have Member Otmar, who's not spoken to the, the emotion. He just spoke to the amendment. Thank you. So uh, one of the things that I that seem to be getting, kind of the trend that I get from this is that there's certainly um, a need or kind of questions about what exactly we need to kind of help us along. And so, so with that, I would like to make a motion to amend uh, member Mills mo to amend the existing motion to say that we call on district administration to inform us of the resources required to effect and then numbers one through 10. Okay, so you're, you're looking to strike that second sentence. So we call upon the district administration. So instead of to say, to solicit and hire competent, um, solicit and hire an educational consulting firm within the next 10 days, you're saying to call on the district administration to inform the school committee within the next 10 days. Of the resources needed to effect and then okay. the bullet list that has been provided. Okay, of the resources needed to effect, and then the bullets remain below? Correct. Okay, there is a motion to amend on the floor. Is there a second? Second. It's been made and seconded, um, so our hands will go up anew. Um, is there anyone who wishes to speak to the motion on the floor? I'm gonna if try I, to- If I may just very briefly, just, just to add to what I've already said, um, I, I think that this gives it gives it, it it's an opportunity and I would I would have kept the t I think the 10 working days is that's when our next meeting is I believe um, but it's it's a chance for administration to say okay maybe the, of the bullet list maybe there's something on there that a consultant would be a good fit for maybe there's something that a temp hire would be a good fit for because the items that were listed on there there's a lot of value and it will really move our district forward if we can be able to dig into those and get those answered. And if we just don't have the manpower to get it done, then for administration to say, this is what we need to get that done. Then as a committee, we can say, all right, we want to, we want to, we want to look at moving resources around or no, nope, got it. We don't want to move resources around. We just want to stick with who we're with, but we at least need for them to tell us what, what would be able to fix the problem. Okay, thank you. I've typed your amendment into the chat. Please let me know if I've typed it incorrectly. Um, while you're looking at that, I'll go to Member Gustafson for discussion on the amendment, please. Didn't know I was first. Um, <laughs> so my concern, I think that's the general gist. I mean, I think we are trying to get to a better place than where we are, and there's a lot of frustration about the lack of answers. My concern, and, and I don't have a solution to this, honestly, but my concern is that we have been asking, I'm on business and finance, we started asking about budgetary questions in March that we still didn't get answers to, and some of them just disappeared because there were other issues. We've been asking the same questions all summer, meeting after meeting, and only getting answers when there's an absolute like panic, like Friday, we got answers because there was so much pressure from the public and then the answers we did get contradicted what we were talking about and the answers seem to contradict themselves um even in the same week which is not all coming from desi sometimes it has been due to changes and guidelines sometimes it's not been so this is my concern that if we do something like this um i'm concerned that we don't have we still won't get answers because we've been asking questions literally all summer every week or two weeks we've been asking the same questions and we are, do not get answers. And so I, I, I'm, I appreciate the intent because I think that's really what we're all trying to do is find a way out of where we are. 
and find a way to move forward in a positive direction to help our students and give our families answers that we know will be carried through and not change two days from now because our internal process didn't work. Um, but I'm concerned about how to do that because just asking for more information is a start, but I, I, I'm concerned that we won't get it. And I don't really have an answer because I've been highly frustrated all summer about asking questions and being told, yes, we'll get it by this date and then not getting it. And there's nothing we can do except ask again. So I don't know how we break that cycle. I don't necessarily think the consultant is the only answer, but I just, I think the intent is that asking and being told we'll have an answer soon, like the frequently asked questions that aren't there yet, we keep running into this cycle where we ask and don't get answers. And I don't know how to solve that. So that is my concern with the amendment, um, even though I appreciate the intent of it. Um, and I will listen carefully to the rest of the discussion. I just am not sure if that leaves us really in a better place. I mean, it feels like we're walking out on another limb and hoping we'll get answers. And I don't know how to change that. So hopefully some of you will enlighten me, but that's my concern. Thank you. Member Dennis on the amendment, please. Thank you. So there was a question that was raised earlier uh, that I think speaks to this amendment, and and that is, you know, uh, have we asked what we can do to help? And, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes on multiple occasions. The answer is yes in multiple venues, including um, through uh, various subcommittee meetings. Um, so um, I, I think that's an important piece of piece of information as we talk about um, should we ask again uh, what is needed in order to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Member Dennis. Um, after him is Member Lavoie. Well, I, I appreciate the, I, I think Member Otmer, the maker of this motion, I, I appreciate the intent. The one thing that, that really concerns me is that we're calling on district administration to essentially communicate to us. And I think that the communication is a two-way street and I think it's time that the communication has to be administration using their ears and, and evaluating what's there. We've heard from members of the opening task force who created a hybrid plan specifically for the high school that has been ignored by administration. So I think it would be disingenuous for us to think that administration may come back now and say, oh, we have to relook at that those data points from the opening task force. I think it's time for us to actually have an opportunity to to hear from somebody who, who might be able to look at those and find that optimal way. The other piece that really concerned me was last Wednesday, um, prior to, to our meeting, we were four and a half days into remote learning and I found out on Tuesday that administration had canceled um, had canceled professional development that was supposed to be run by administration. And I wonder to myself four and a half days into remote learning how you could cancel the very first professional development session that was hosted by administration. Is that the voice to talking to the amendment on the floor? I am, I am talking to the amendment. I'm talking to the fact that the amendment I don't think covers that level of communication. It's that that push of information that the night before administration was supposed to host professional development, they pushed information out as opposed to receiving communication back. And I, I just don't think that we're holding administration accountable by saying, give us 10 days to give us answers to what we've been asking for for months. Thank you, Member Lavoie. Um, next up is Member Ayala. Question, are we able to amend the motion on the floor? <laughs> um, I believe. <laughs> or do we have to vote on that motion first? Let me go to the rules. It is easier to vote on it first, but I do believe at some point we have amended. Let's, we, we can amend the amendment on the floor, um, but then we would have to go back and vote twice. Yes. Okay. I'll Do hold my thoughts then. I'll wait. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks. Member Shapiro. Um, I, I really appreciate this. I think that this, um, this amendment is getting closer to where we need to be, where we are essentially asking the administration and Dr. McCall what he needs for help. Tell us what he needs for help. 
Um, I'm concerned about the 10 day deadline. Um, I'd like to possibly hear from him if that's if if he can give us that um, assessment of all those points within the 10 days or even better sooner. Um, because I, there is urgency here. We're, we're waiting. We're waiting. And I hear everyone saying we've been asking for this. We've been asking for this. But what we're asking is not for the particular piece of information. I feel like this is asking for what help do you need to get this information? Does it do you need to hire someone? Do you need to, um, you know, at what, what are the resources? And that's the key word resources. I think that that's what hits this on the head for me. So. Um, would the administration like to answer? that question, the first time a question has been posed to the administration in this discussion, or would you prefer to discussion to continue, Dr. McCall? Dr. McCall, would you like to answer? Or would you like us to continue? You're muted. I apologize. My speaker was playing a little trick on me, so I'm trying to fix it. Can you repeat the question? Um, sure. I just am wondering if um, the way that this uh, amendment is written is um, to inform us of the resource needed within the next 10 business days. Um, I'd like to say, or sooner, is 10 business days enough time for you to give us that inf that assessment of the resources that you need? Or um, is that an unreasonable request? No, I, I think it's reasonable. It, that gives us two weeks to um, you know spend some time you know reaching out to uh, some different groups, you know, I, I can tell you I've already reached out to uh, one group um, about, you know, seeking um, some type of support in some form or fashion. So that that should be good. Thank you for asking. Okay, thank you. Okay, member Shapiro, thank you. We'll go to member Kirschenbaum, please. Thank you. Um, I'll be brief. I think that as elected officials, um, it's our job uh, to ask for information and clarification and provide oversight. Um, so I don't really think that we need a motion to do that. I think um, I, I don't know if a formal motion is really what we need to get the information that we want. Um, I can appreciate that we've asked in the past, but I'm not sure that we've done a formal ask. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. Thank you, Member Christian Bowman. I also see you have a point of order. Uh, I'm all set. Okay. I, I, I was thinking somebody may have a point of order, perhaps. Why, well, yes, I would make the motion to extend the meeting. Oh, until 830. Second. That's what I thought you were going to say. It took the voice right out of my mouth. It's been made and seconded. Um, is there a discussion on, on the motion to extend? All right, let's do it. Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? Ayala, yes. Member Bennett? Uh, there were two hands. Oh. Sorry. I thought those hands were for the amendment. Um, Member Brown? Nope, I, I see. I've got I've got lots of hand signals from Member Woodland. Um, you, gave, you gave me the smoke signals. I, I, am, <laughs> I can see everybody on one screen now. It's lovely. Um, yes, extending. Um, I just I just had a question about our next um, meeting and yeah. um, given, I don't, I don't know if maybe since member Brown had his hand up too, um, just what the time schedule is, what it's there isn't for one. Us or no. what. So that's what I just wanted to check on. Um, according to MASC, who I contacted yesterday because I had the same question, we may never start our meeting early. We may start it as late as we need to. So perhaps between meetings, we'll get a cup of coffee. Member Brown? Brown, yes. Okay. All right, so we've got Amos, yes, Ayala, yes, Bennett. Bennett, yes. We've got Member Brown already, Member Dennis. Dennis, yes. Member Gustafson? Yes. Member Haber? Haber, yes. Member Amber? I, I got the nod, I got the smoke signal, and the thumbs up. This is how we do it in Princeton, Bob. <laughs> Member Kirschenbaum. Kirschenbaum, yes. Member Lavoie. Lavoie, yes. 
Number Long Boyle. Long Boyle, yes. Number Mills. Mills, yes. Number Mitchell. Mitchell, yes. Number Otmar. Otmar, yes. Number Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Number Silva. Silva, yes. Number Smith. Smith, yes. Number Williamson. Williamson, yes. Number Woodland. Woodland, yes. Number Young. Young, yes. And the chair votes yes. The meeting is now extended to 8.30. I would like to remind members that we were speaking to the amendment on the floor um, made by member Otmar and our discussion should be limited to that amendment. Um, so we heard from member Christian Ball, member Long Um I, I do appreciate the intent of the amendment. I, I'm not sure it works grammatically and let me just read you a quick excerpt so that to, to see if I'm on the right track about that. Um, so I would say the amendment basically calls upon the district to, uh, for lack of a better term, to summarize the report back to us about the, the bulleted items below the first paragraph. Um, and, and those include assessing the district's current remote educational plans through targeted feedback from parents, teachers, students, administrators, providing recommendations for improvements and adjustments, leveraging district analysis to date and peer district plans. Um, and then there's a list, a, a sub bullet list. I just think, I, I'm not sure all of this works within, is, is workable within um, uh, the structure of the, of the motion. And um, I'm not even sure it all quite works. Um, within the next 10 days or um, until our next meeting. Um, that said, I do think it would be helpful to have a list, a list of things, a formal list of things, either a formal request to the administration or something that you did that was I thought was very helpful a couple of meetings ago, Megan, was to, was to send the administration a list of, yeah. of yeah. items. I thought that was very helpful. So, so I think um, instead of supporting this particular motion, I would support the spirit of the motion and and suggest that we either have a, a formal request in uh approved by the committee or have you keep track and create a list of yes. items that that people request i'm open to either of those approaches and linda just to say regardless of this motion or this meeting um that's something i intend to do every meeting and we'll continue to do okay i think that's very helpful thank you you're welcome all right six seconds to spare <laughs> I feel like someone's going to win a prize tonight. All right, Member Brown on the amendment, please. Yes, I, I agree with the last two members. I uh, The motion as it stands, I really don't think it should be a motion. I think it should be uh, go through uh, the chair. Um, and I would also like to call the motion. Okay. Uh, Member Brown has called the motion. Second. Second. You're muted, Megan. Oh, good. I was just stopping my timer so it doesn't ring in the middle of this. So it's been made and seconded. Um, it is not debatable. Um, so member Amos. So we're voting on the amended. Nope, we're calling the question to vote on the amendment. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. Member Ayala. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. Yes. Member Brown. Brown, yes. Member Dennis. Dennis, yes. Yeah. Member Gustafson. Uh, yes. Member Haver. Haver, yes. Member Ember. Uh. Is that a no? Most single no. <laughs> the no. It's a no. Yeah, it's Remember a Christian. computer, but it's a no. I gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> it's been a long day. Can you clarify what a yes vote is and what a no vote is? <laughs> a yes vote is calling the question to stop discussion of the amendment and to vote on the amendment. That's what I thought. Okay, yes, thank you. Member LaVoy? No. Member Long Belial? Yes. Member Mills? Mills, no. Member Mitchell? Yes. Member Otmar? Otmar abstain. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, yes. Member Silva? Silva, no. Member Smith? Smith, yes. Member Williamson? Williamson, yes. Member Woodland? 
Woodland, no. Member Young. Young, yes. The chair abstains and the motion passes. So now the question on the floor is on the amendment. The amendment made by Member Otmar is to select the second half of the second sentence to now state to call on the district administration to inform us of the resources needed to affect within the next next 10 business days for the purpose of the bullets below. Um, I do agree with Member Long Boyle that the grammar is now worded incorrectly because of the change of the amendment. Um, typically that'd be a friendly amendment to go back and change the wording grammatically. Chair, we um, have a point of order, please. Yes, please. Uh, motions to call the question require a two thirds majority. Can you verify that there was a two thirds majority on the vote? I believe there is, I I I'll, I'll tally again. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeses. Uh, two thirds of 20. Times two, that is two thirds. Thank you. So we're voting on the amendment. Member Amos? Sorry, yes. Member Ayala? Ayala. Member Bennett? Yes. Member Brown? Brown, no. Member Dennis? Dennis, no. Member Gustafson? Gustafson, no. Member Haber. Haber, no. Member Imber. Imber, no. Member Kirschenbaum. Kirschenbaum, yes. Member Lavoy. Lavoy, no. Member Longbelio. Longbelio, no. Member Mills. Mills, no. No. Member Mitchell. Um, Mitchell, yes. Member Otmar. Palmer, yes. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Silva, no. Member Smith. Smith, no. Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, no. Member Young. Young, yes. Chair abstains. Let me tally that for you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No. Um, this is a majority uh, vote, so it does not pass. The amendment fails. So we go back to the original amended motion on the floor. Um, is there any further discussion on this motion? Can you just remind us what we're voting on? <laughs> We are voting, we're now back to the original amended motion. So it is the motion that states, let me go back to the exact wording that member Mills had amended, where we okay. struck the express no confidence and replaced with expressed concern about the status of the district's return to school plans for the 2020-2021 academic year with the striking of confidence. So we just, we have gone back to including the consulting firm. Is there any further discussion on this original motion? Um, point of, I, I don't know if it's a point of order or point of information, maybe it's a point of information. I just wanna be really clear on what we're voting on and I'm, I'm just tired, so. Um, um, so if we vote for this amendment, if we vote yes, um, do we strike the no confidence language and keep correct. the consulting language? Is that what happens? That is what ha That is the motion we are voting on, correct. I see. And Megan, I've raised my hand several times okay. for a number of different motions yep. and have not been called upon. I got I, you're right here in line, Member Ember. So my original questions were not rhetorical in any sense. When I when when I spoke to the original motion, and it applies to every single motion that we've since made, I was expecting the superintendent and Member Dennis to talk about the the um, ability costs and and ways in which we could in fact affect 
the goals of, of the amendment. I support the notion of it. I desperately think that we need a very clear plan that outlines exactly who's going to do what. And and I'm happy if, if it's within reason financially and, and it makes sense in terms of, of being able to hire someone that we do those things. I think it's essential for us to do. The question is, can the superintendent speak to that? And can member Dennis, since he's the original framer of the original motion, what, what is our ability to actually uh, effectuate this? So you're and looking for cost and ability? A rhetorical question. And it's still not a rhetorical question. Okay, so you're looking for Dr. McCall and or member Dennis to speak to the costs and ability of this to happen? Yeah, how's it gonna work? So here, I've had my hand raised to speak to some of these questions that were raised in the first round. I'm not happy to speak to um, Member Ember, and I think others have raised the same questions. Sure. Go ahead, Member Dennis. So, you know, the question about, um, I guess two questions, I'll, I'll synthesize it. Um, the first is how to pay. And I'll remember, remind the, the committee members. Uh, one is that um, the towns have passed our budget. Um, however, we are still operating um, on a, uh, um, a, a fiscal year 20 funded or, or level budget. Um, so we've been operating in that mode since the start of school. The second is that the district has applied for uh, and I believe has received probably just south of $2 million in grants related to COVID expenses. I would expect and, and would certainly argue that um, bringing in help and support for planning uh, would fall in line uh, with COVID related expenses. Um, the last piece in terms of, you know, how realistic is it that we find someone, I think that's what we need to explore and that's what this motion is calling for. Um, in my conversation uh, with a couple of, of retired uh, superintendents, um, one of them, to, to quote them, said, this is not rocket science. Um, this is something that over 70% of districts um, have already figured out and have been able to give an option for students to return to school, that this is largely a matter of, of logistical planning um, and communication and felt that uh, if we were to bring somebody in, somebody who may even exist within our own district um, to be able to help us with this exercise, um, that it is uh, something that uh, can be done leveraging uh, the work that's been done uh, in planning for uh, peer school districts. Dr. McCall, would you like to add to that explanation at all? You're muted. If it's on my speaker, it's my microphone. So, uh, yeah, I, again, when works, Member Dennis uh, is correct. We've received, um, you know, if officially we, we're still waiting on the funds from uh, the federal government for our, our last grant, but we were told it was approved. Uh, it's a little bit south of $1.6 million. And then we have had also the CARES Act grant that has uh, come in. So we're a little under $2 million. Uh, that money has gone toward many different things, including PPE, uh, technology that we're still waiting on, um, you know, helping to pay for certain things that we just don't have the funds to pay for. Um, so, uh, you know, in terms of getting support to do this, um, you know, we could definitely, you know, look out um, for that. And it's, again, retired superintendents um, could come in and help support that. You know, I, I've reached out to my uh, to the superintendents group about this. It, it is something that um, you know, other school districts have uh, taken advantage of. And you know, as we look at what we we need to do, um, you know, we do have a plan. Uh, you know, how it kind of plays out is uh, still somewhat dependent upon um, you know a couple different factors um, as we move forward. But you know, I, I feel as though if there was a way to get um, you know some support, and I think I've you know, mentioned this, we are thin in central office and, um, you know, we're doing many jobs at the same time. And that's, that's really the, the, you know, one of the main factors with, with this entire situation. Um, I appreciate the, um, you know, the olive branch in terms of reaching out and saying, Hey, you know, how can we help? Because I think that's really kind of that, that next step. So I, I, I do appreciate that. And, um, Bob, your, um, you, you know, how this might play out. Could we get all those things? I'm not 1000% sure, but I think that's one of the things that we look at. Um, and, you know, that'll be the first thing on the agenda tomorrow morning in my staff meeting. Well, then I support the amendment. Thank you. Uh, Member Dennis, are there other things you'd like to, um, you're next in the chat? No, that's why I had my hand raised. I'm good. Thank you. 
Um, and then Bob, again, do you have a second uh, point? Bob, do you have another follow-up? I don't want to miss you. Do I? Yeah, I just you're in no, here. No, I've said way too much as usual. Thanks. All right. Member Al Ala is next. My mute button doesn't want to come on. <laughs> um, so a question, are, if, if we were, I know if we could, we could come up with a list to, to send along with this, right? Um, if we did that, like somebody I think mentioned about the task force um, that assisted with making this hybrid program already. Is there a way to include them on this? Uh, motion so they can work with administration since they were the ones that um, originally uh, came up with these with the with these ideas so there would be two ways to do that the most formal formal way would be to make an amendment to include the task force within the, this motion you may also um, put through a request for information or a request for the task force to reconvene um, more informally, it's up to you. I think I'd like to try to put a motion in place so the task force is also added onto that, the already, the already, the motion we already have on hand. Okay. Um, how would you like I that? How would you like that wording and how would you like to amend the motion? Had to ask. <laughs> um, I guess the way I would like to say it is if we, uh, we, the committee, want to also include adding the task force to assist with organizing um, the hybrid program. Where would you like that included? Would that be after the educational consulting firm and the task force? Yes, at the end, yes. So within that clause, it would read, we call upon the district administration to solicit and hire a educational consulting firm and to include the task force. Would you? The, uh, is it called the reopening task? I want to use the right wording for the task force. <laughs> so would you like to to include the reconvening, or would you like just their suggestions? Um, I definitely like their their suggestions and feedback on assisting with organizing the hybrid program. All right. So include the suggestions and. Um, of the, I'm just typing as we speak so everybody can see it. To include the suggestions of the reopening task force. Um, suggestions after, and feedback, sorry. Is there, is there, is that the wording you're looking for? I, I don't want to rush you. You have, you have all the time. Don't feel rushed in. Sorry. It's hard to make, it's hard to make an amendment. So I want to make sure it's made the way you want to make it. Okay. The suggestions and feedback would be would be. I just don't want to double double say the same thing twice either <laughs> um, in the wording. Um, right. I'm gonna put it in the chat. You tell me if it's right. If it's not right, we can fix it. This is my chat. All right. Also, take a look at that. If it's not right, we can fix it. Suggestions and feedback of the reopening task force after the clause uh, to assist with or to assist with organizing the hybrid program. Um, so I want to make sure they're assisting with organizing the hybrid program. Program. So the amendment would read. The word and after the words consulting firm, the suggestions and feedback of the reopening task force to assist with organizing the hybrid program. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Member Ayala has made an amendment to the motion. Is there a second? Megan, do you mind just reading the overview of that motion, please, of the amendment? No problem. So in the second sentence of the motion, 
it would read, we call upon the district administration to solicit and hire an educational consulting firm and to take the suggestions and feedback of the reopening task force to assist with organizing the hybrid program within the next 10 business days. That is the reading of member Ayala's motion. Is there a second? I'm seeing no second. So we're gonna move on. Okay, member Long Bolio. Um, you're muted, Linda. So we're just, our discussion is back yes. to the original motion. Right, now I know. I wanna apologize again. I still wanna be clear about what we're voting on and I'm still not clear. And um, so I humbly apologize to everyone else. Um, is, is the first part of the, of the original, are we only voting on the consulting piece? That's my question. Uh, the original consulting language, is that what we're voting on? That's, and it has the motion for, of no confidence been struck. Um, Etc. Oops, now I can't hear you, Megan. You're muted. Still muted. I'm getting there. <laughs> when that bar disappears from the bottom, but it gets tricky. Um, mm -hmm. so yes, Linda, we have already amended the motion. The motion as amended does not include any wording about no confidence. Okay, thank you. So, pass. so we, are, mm -hmm. we are trying to vote on the motion on the floor, which states we, the members of the Washington Regional School District, express concern in Dr. McCall's management of the district re return for 2020-2021 school year and the rest of the motion is as is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. That's a great question. Point of I, order. I don't think that was the yeah. That, that's my point of order. What you just read is not what's in the text from the original <laughs> amendment. To express to strike express no confidence in the super Intendant McCall's management and district's return and replaced with express concern about the status of the district's return to school year plans for the 2020 2021 school year. I'm going to just put this at the bottom of the chat so everybody can read it and I can read it easier. It's been a while since this was in. Does that help Linda to see it? That has passed. Yes, that helps. Okay, so now we are at when Linda spoke, member Amos who lowered her hand, member Brown. I would like to call the motion. Member Brown would like to call the call the question. Is there a second? Second. It's been made and seconded. We're gonna go to a roll call vote. Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? I'd like to make a point of order. I think Member Young had his hand up before Member Brown made that motion. I believe he had a point of order. Um, was there something else, Member Young? <laughs> yes. Um, sorry. Uh, thank you. Um, you? I, I just wanted to say that we're all talking about consult, uh, consulting possibly with an individual, but the way this reads is it has to be a consulting firm. So... I was going to make a motion to strike consulting firm and replace with consultant. Therefore, giving it the option to be a firm or. Second. Second. That motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion on that motion? Seeing none. So we would be, let me write it down. Break consulting firm, Adam. Yes. And replace with consultant. Yep. Would is it help correct? if I presented it? Is that correct now? Yes. So all we're doing here is striking a single, those two words, consulting firm, and replacing it with the word consultant. Is there further discussion? Member Amos. Amos, no. Member Ayala. Yes. Member Bennett. 
we're voting on the um, amend the amendment yep. that was just yes. Member Brown. Brown no. Member Dennis. Dennis yes. Member Gustafson yes. Member Haber. Haber yes. Member Ember. Ember yes. Member Kirschenbaum. Kirschenbaum yes. Member Lavoy. Lavoy yes. Member Longbolil. No. Um, member Mills? Oh, yes. Member Mitchell? Yes. Member Otmar? Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, yes. Member Silva? Just to be clear, Megan, is, this is on word consultant versus consulting firm? Correct. Changing it to the word consultant instead of consulting firm. Okay, no. Member Smith? Smith, yes. Member Williamson? Williamson, yes. Member Woodland? Woodland, yes. Member Young? Yes. And the chair abstains. That motion passes. And I am sorry to miss you. It is a very busy chat tonight. Um, so then, Laura, did you get it? Is that your chance to speak before the question was called? Lowering my hand. Okay. Uh, member Mills's point of order was covered. Member Lavoie, what was your point of order covered? Yes, my point of order was that I believe Member Young had had his hand up before Member Brown made the motion to move the question, and I think that's where we might be now. Thank you very much for covering that. I appreciate it. No problem. Um, point of order to extend. I think we're at our vote um, unless someone else has another amendment. So moved. So let's go back to that vote. Um, Megan, could you repeat? There's a lot of feedback. I couldn't hear. Um, I think then you, you're, um, so we are going to go back to our vote. Um, I do apologize for missing your hand, Member Young. So we are voting on the motion on the floor, um, which is as written with the two amendments that passed. If you just scroll slightly up in your chat, you will see the amendment, the amendment by Member Mills, which passed to express concern about the status of the district's return to school plans for the 2020-2021 academic year, striking the word confident from the next line, and Member Young's motion to change consulting firm to consultant passed. So those are the two amendments that passed. So we are voting on the motion as amended. Before we vote, is everyone clear? I don't want to. I don't want to move on until I make sure everybody knows what they what they're voting on. I don't want to make a mistake here. Does the motion so still? This is to what? Okay. Linda, does the motion still require that the school committee approves the consultants? It does. Anyone else? No, that was basically my question. So this motion would require the administration to get guidance from an outside consulting company. Uh, not necessarily company, but some sort of consultant. Oh, yeah. Person. Yeah. Point of order, Member Gustafson. You're muted, Malia. Malia, you're muted. Um, I was calling attention to Sherry's because I assume it's about time. I was looking at the clock. I, I, think, had one. I think I could fit it in if we don't have further questions. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I'd rather take our time and do this right. I actually, I have a question. Um, in in because we want this to happen uh, very quickly. Uh, and uh, waiting for meetings. I know that we can have them uh, a little bit quicker, but uh, wouldn't it be quicker if Dr. McCall uh, chose someone and had someone help uh, immediately instead of having, having to run that by us? It's a question. Um, yeah, let me do that. Let's do the motion to extend. I'll share my screen. So, Member Haber, motion to extend. 
So I've got point of order. Yes, so moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Member Amos? Yes. Member Ayala? Ayala, yes. Member Bennett? Bennett, yes, and sorry. Member Brown? Brown, yes. Member Dennis? Met Dennis, yes. Member Gustafson? We're voting on the amended. No, we are just voting to extend to nine o'clock because I want to. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm yes, sorry. I missed that. I want to share my screen. Hey, Ray, yes. Member Ember. Bob? I'm not getting the smoke signals. <laughs> I think he's frozen. Go back to Bob. Um, Member Christian Bob? No. Member Lavoy? No. Member Longbulio? Yes. Member Mills? Yes. Member Mitchell? Yes. Member Otmar? Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, yes. Member Silva? We're voting to extend the meeting, right? Correct. Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Member Smith. Smith, yes. Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, yes. And Member Young. Yes. Okay. Of course, it does not want to open with Google Docs at the moment. <laughs> let me see. It's, and I cannot edit the PDF, so let's see if. Do you want me to try to present it? I've got it in the Word document. You have it in the Word document, Adam. That'd be great. Okay. Give me one second. See if it lets me. Google Docs is printing right now. Is in here. Is it up there? Yep. There we go. All right. Um, do you mind if I read it aloud and you keep your screen open, Adam? Sure. Okay. So this is the motion on the floor in which we are voting on. We, the members of the Wachusett Regional School District School Committee, express concern about the status of the district's return to school plan for the 2020-2021 school year, academic year. We call upon the district administration to solicit and hire an educational consultant within the next 10 business days for the purpose of assessing the district's current remote educational plan through targeted feedback from parents, teachers, students, and administration, providing recommendations for improvement and adjustments that are within the district's reasonable capability and resources, leveraging district analysis to date and peer district plans, developing a comprehensive return to school plan, which is inclusive but not limited to, Entry criteria for a successful return to school models, blending on-site and remote learning by using specific actions and or metrics, developing a backlog of actions needed with associated timelines and resources plan in order to facilitate successful entry criteria, which are within the district's control, a plan for moving through different modalities of learning, for example, fully remote, hybrid, or blended, as environmental and health conditions warrant, a communication plan for parents, teachers, students, and school committee members, regular monitoring of the district's implementation of the plan, including feedback and retrospective of parents, teachers, students, administrators, and school committee members, and recommendations for improvements, weekly reporting to the school committee, either written or in person, of the progress, risks, and issues in the development of this plan and regular monitoring, the selection of the educational consultant, I just want to make sure the verbiage is the same as above, the educational consultant shall be subject to the approval of the school committee. Are there further questions regarding the motion on the floor? I'm also just going to make the English work up here. Thank you. Member Shapiro, you have a question about the motion on the floor. I think Linda was before me. Um, trying to see. No, not I. No. Okay. okay. No, so I'm going me. It's Linda. 8.30 on after it was read. 
Okay, so my next or Linda? Um, either one. Linda, do you, do you have a question on the motion on the floor? I do, but go ahead, Deirdre. Um, I was actually going to, I'd like to make an amendment to this motion to strike the selection of the educational consultant company shall be subject to the approval of the school committee. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to amend the motion. Is there second. A, it's been made and seconded. Um, Member Shapiro, it's your motion. You may speak to it first if you'd like. Um, to the point that was just made right before we got back here, um, is that I just think there's timing, timing is an issue. Um, we need to ha have this happen quickly and the quicker that this consultant gets up and on board and um, I don't think vetting through us, I think that, that it needs to be vet through um, Superintendent McCall's and his staff and make sure that this person is competent, which is a word we took out, but it's obviously we're looking for someone competent. Um, they know what they need and um, I think that this is unnecessary. And timely. Thank you. Um, Member Mitchell had a point of over order about the motion to call the question, which does supersede other motions. However, I did miss one hand, and by missing that hand, um, we no longer had called the question. But then you, uh, sorry, but Chair, but then you didn't go back to Member Brown. Where's Member Brown? I'm trying to find well, him. I, I know hand. Member Brown is the one who who made the who. Raise his hand. All the question. Question. So, according to order, you would have had to go back to that raised hand. That is correct. Um, I do appreciate the motion that's on the floor, though. Um, if you'd like to overrule my ruling, we can vote on that. But I, I do want to give Member Shapiro the floor. I know it's getting late, and we have another meeting to go. I would like to vote on overruling that because I pointed that out when. Way back when I pointed out that member Young had had the floor, and yep. that was the point of order. Then the next um, person to have the floor was member Brown. So I would like to overrule that ruling. Okay, is there a second? I just need a second. We don't need a debate. Second. We made in second. So this would be to overrule my ruling to allow this amendment and to call the question. Member Amos. Amos, no. Member Ayala. Sorry, this is just to call the, it would more or less call the question to overrule my ruling that member Shapiro's amendment is in order. Uh, yes. Excuse me, Megan, just as a point of order, can we just be, can we just clarify what a yes vote means in this case? A, what yes, I, a yes vote would stop this new amendment and would call the question. A yes vote calls the question. And the new amendment is that sentence you highlighted? Correct. The new amendment is the elimination of the sentence that you highlighted. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. I'm sorry, can I make another point of order for clarity? Um, Member Brown may, we should go back to him, but there's no, we haven't called the question yet. Like we didn't vote on that, correct? So we did just going on, back. We did so vote just, on calling the question. My, we did. my recollection was that we did not vote on calling the question. We did vote on calling the question. We got stopped before we voted on the actual motion mm -hmm. itself. Right, we started voting. Yes. I, I'll withdraw my question. So, Member Brown, you're withdrawing, you're calling right. on. I'm withdrawing my hand. Okay, hand is withdrawn, motion is withdrawn. Let's go back to this amendment. All right, so speaking on the amendment that Member Shapiro made, Member Brown, is your hand up regarding the amendment? I have you at 834 right at the same time as Member Shapiro. Oh, it's just Scott. We'll go back to you. Um, Member Woodland, a hand on the amendment. Thank you. Um, so I see that this whole reason for tonight's meeting was that uh, the role of the school committee has been circumvented in some ways. And so I think taking out our um, ability to provide a check will be doing a disservice to um, to our district. We've gone over how multiple times we've asked for information, but apparently it wasn't formal enough. That was not my understanding, but apparently that was others. Um, so 
I would not like to uh, leave this open-ended. I would really like to make sure the loop is closed and that we know what we're getting into, especially if we're going to be paying uh, a consultant. I wanna know who this is. And I think that that is part of our responsibilities as a school committee. Thank you, Member Woodland. Um, Member Lavoie? Member Woodland um, echoed everything that I'd like to say. And I do think it is our responsibility as the school committee to our constituents to have oversight as to where um, publicly funded money is going and for the output of, of that consultant's work. And we should have some ownership and say in that process. So I, I don't support this amendment. Thank you, Member Lavoie. Um, Member Dennis? Thank you. So I too do not support the amendment. Um, we, you know, we identify 10 days to identify somebody to help us with this. Um, we happen to have a school committee meeting um, on the calendar for roughly that same time period. And I think that those two things align and I agree with the points that have been made by both uh, Member Woodland and Member Lavoy. Thank you. Thank you, Member Dennis. Member Bennett? There's language uh, that already exists above that that uh, requires weekly reporting to the school committee, um, either written or in person, of uh, 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 risks of, uh, and progress and issues um, in the development of the plan. Uh, and I think that that definitely would include Dr. McCall letting us know who that person is that he has chosen as a consultant. Member Haber? Uh, generally, I agree with Member Woodland, Lavoy, and um, I just think that it's just not feasible. If in 10 days, business days, we get he gets back to us with a name and the committee votes no, then we're in a position where we're starting all over again. I think that the key to this is its timeliness. And as much as I do think that there needs to be oversight over the whole process at this point, um, I just don't think that this is where we need to be putting the oversight. Okay, Member Silva. Um, my point of view is we've gotten comments from our community uh, constituents that you know school committee needs to hold what's going on and the leadership accountable. And that particular sentence gives us the right to hold accountable and make it very clear what our expectations are. Um, members have said throughout this meeting, we have asked for multiple information about just even remote and going hybrid in the all over the summer, and we've never gotten a clear answer. So taking this out, I feel we're going to go right back to never getting a clear answer, not knowing who this consultant is, who, um, you know, what exactly are we expecting from them? Do we approve of it? So I'm, I'm against taking this particular sentence out. Member Dennis again. Sure, very quickly, um, to the point that uh, or a concern that um, the superintendent might put somebody forward that the school committee rejects, I would suggest that um, the superintendent could have a practice to mitigate uh, against that happening by working out and communicating with the school committee during that process. Okay, thank you very much. Any other members have uh, questions or comments regarding the amendment on the floor? Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote on the amendment, which is the yellow highlighted section on your screen to be deleted. Member Amos. Amos, no. Member Ayala. Ayala, no. Member Bennett. Bennett, yes. Member Brown. Brown, yes. Member Dennis. Dennis, no. Member Gustafson. Gustafson, no. Member Haber. Haber, yes. Mm -hmm. Member Ember. No. Will Ember, no. Member Kirschenbaum? Kirschenbaum, yes. Member Lavoy. Lavoy, no. Member Long Belial? Long Belial, yes. Yes. Mills, no. No, no. Mitchell? Mitchell, yes. Member Otmar? Otmar, no. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Silva, no. Member Smith. Smith, yes. Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, no. Member Young. Young, yes. 
And the chair votes yes. I'm going to count these votes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve yeses. So the amendment passes. So now we go back to, um, could you delete that for us, Member Young? Go back to the amendment on the floor, which was, as I have read, with the deletion of the, follow the final sentence. Is there further discussion on the motion on the floor? Member Mitchell? Yeah. Actually, Linda, was first. Linda, got, Linda was first. Linda? Okay. Okay. Um, so the motion on the floor is th this entire page, um, page without with the deletion of the sentence at the very end. Is that right? That's everything, been deleted? Every, yep, everything on your screen is the motion. Adam's okay. got the whole thing on his screen. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a, a, a motion to amend the motion. Um, in the, under the third bullet, um, under, the fir, under the first paragraph, under the, in the third bullet, mm -hmm. leveraging district analysis to date and peer district plans, I'd like to strike the words developing a, um, and instead insert the words um, leveraging district leveraging district analysis to date and peer district plans to inform the comprehensive return to school plan. Um, I'd like to strike the words developing A and to insert the words to inform A. Okay, that is um, the motion on the floor. Is there a second? If I could speak to my reasoning. Oh, you need a second. Okay. Second. It's been made and seconded. Member along the way, you have the floor. My reasoning is very simple. We already have a plan and we don't need a whole brand new plan. But what I think we need is more information for our current plan. Thank you. Um, is there anyone that would like to speak to her amendment? Member Woodland? Um, <laughs> I mostly want to just say that we have um, an outline of a plan, but it's one that changes uh, completely 180 degrees depending on public pressure, um, which doesn't sound like much of a plan. And I do believe that there's quite a bit of development left to make it actionable uh, for this school year. Uh, so, I mean, maybe it's just semantics at this point, but I just, I don't have confidence that we actually have a developed plan that just needs a few more details. I think that there's quite a bit left out. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Bennett. Um, just to kind of um, comment on, on that, I think that any plan needs to be able to have room for movement um, and to have a firm and very concrete plan could be dangerous um, in the future, something that can't be moved and amended. Uh, so uh, I think that having more information added as opposed to having a concrete and firm solution uh, is going to, in this case, because of how moving this issue is, uh, would be the, the best solution. Thank you. Um, are there others that wish to speak on Member Longoliu's amendment? Member Woodland. I'm sorry, I just wanted to clarify. I um, Developing, I don't think means that I want a hard, concrete, unmovable plan. I just mean that there are a lot of details left out that um, are needed that I don't think Inform has as much uh, power behind. That's really it. I don't want to be immovable. Thank you. Any others would like to speak to Member Longbrilio's amendment? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go to a roll call vote. So what you're voting on is Member Longbrilio's amendment. 
um, which is to strike the word developing and change it to to inform A. Member Amos. Amos, no. Member Ayala. Ayala, no. Member Bennett. Bennett, yes. Member Brown. Brown, yes. Member Dennis. Dennis, yes. Member Gustafson. Gustafson, no. Member Haber. Haber, no. No. Sorry, guys. My notes are getting messy. Um, member Ember. Ember, yes. Member Kirstenbaum. Kirstenbaum, yes. Member Lavoy. Lavoy, no. Member Long Belial. Long Belial, yes. Member Mills. Mills, no. Member Mitchell. Mitchell, yes. Okay. Member Otmar. Otmar, no. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Silva, no. Member Smith. Smith, yes. Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, no. Member Young. Young, yes. The chair is going to vote no on this one. Let me count these up again. I miss Rebecca so much right now. All right, here we go. So remember, Amos, you're a no. So I like yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12 yeses, so the motion does pass. So, Member Young, can you make that change for us, please? I'm sorry, Megan, I, did you say I, I yell yes? I voted no. No, okay, so that's still 11 yeses, and so it still passes. Thank you for correcting me. You should see this right now. It's a hot mess. Member... Mitchell had his hand and member Mills. I'd like to call the question. That is not second. Debated. It's made and seconded. So this vote is to call the question. Member Amos. Yes. Member Ayala. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. Yes. Member Brown. Brown, yes. Member Dennis. Dennis, yes. Member Gustafson. Uh, Gustafson, yes. Member Haber. Haber, yes. Member Ember. Ember, yes. Member Kirschenbaum. Kirschenbaum, yes. Member Lavoy. Lavoy, yes. Member Long Belial. Long Belial, yes. Member Mills. Mills, yes. Member Mitchell. Mitchell, yes. Member Otmar. Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. What were you voting on again? Call the question. Uh, with, uh, about which motion? The, the major motion tonight. Say that again? The, the motion, the, the, the motion at hand. Okay, yes. Member Smith? Smith, yes. Member Williamson? Williamson, yes. Member Woodland? Woodland, yes. Member Young? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So we are at the motion at hand, which is on your screen. So now we are voting on the motion that is on your screen. Okay. Are we ready? Member Amos. Amos, no. Member Ayala. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. Krista? Sorry. Um, yes. Member Brown. Brown, yes. Member Dennis. Dennis, yes. Member Hudson. Oh, sorry, yes. Member Haber. Haber, yes. Member Ember. Ember, yes. Member Kirschenbaum. Kirschenbaum, no. Member Lavoy. Lavoy, yes. Member Long Belial. Long Belial, yes. Member Mills. Mills, yes. Member Mitchell. Mitchell, no. Member Otmar. Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro. Shapiro, yes. Member Silva. Um, Silva, yes. Member Smith. Smith, no. 
Member Williamson. Williamson, yes. Member Woodland. Woodland, yes. Member Young. Young, yes. The chair abstains. The motion carries. The next item on our agenda tonight is adjournment. Is there a Stop. motion to adjourn? So moves. Second. Then moved and second. Well, so we'll all vote. We'll then end this meeting and then we'll hop on the regular meeting just to call the meeting to order and then go to executive session. Member Amos. Amos, yes. Member Ayala. Ayala, yes. Member Bennett. Krista? Yes, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Member Brown? Yes. Member Dennis? Dennis, yes. Member yes. yes. Member yes. Member Amber. Amber, yes. Member Kirschenbaum? Kirschenbaum, yes. Member Lavoie? Lavoie, yes. Member Longbelial? Longbelial, yes. Member Mills? Mills, yes. Member Mitchell? Mitchell, yes. Member Otmar? Otmar, yes. Member Shapiro? Shapiro, yes. Member Silva? Silva, yes. Member Smith? Smith, yes. Member Williamson? Williamson, yes. Member Woodland? Woodland, yes. Member Young? Young, yes. Chair votes yes. Um, we're going to end this meeting. Give yourself a minute and we'll hop on to the regularly scheduled meeting. Megan, I'm going to email this document to you.